All right, so we're going to do a quick example of how you can do a related sample t-test and get all the values that are part of it. When we do a related case, we start with a series of pre and post scores. And so in a related case, what we always do first is get the difference between these scores. So to do that, we just take a single person's post score and subtract their pre-score. This could be for whatever values they are. Once we do that, we can go ahead and use the autofill function. So I have B2, A2 here. I can just drag that. And what it's going to do is autofill the different score for every person in my sample now. Once we have these different scores, we use them to calculate all the values that are part of the related t-test. Really, it's the same as a one sample process where here the null hypothesis is that the average difference score is not going to be different from zero. So we're going to use all these values to go ahead and do our calculations for the mean, the standard deviation, the variance, all those pieces. So we can start by getting the mean for the different scores by averaging this set of different scores. So that value is our mean difference. We can do the same kind of thing using all that raw data to get something like the standard deviation. So we can get the average standard deviation of the different scores. And of course, relatedly, we could get the variance of the different scores, the variance just being the square of it. And we would calculate this exactly like we would for any one sample case. We just need to use the differences. So here we have the variance, which is of course the squared, uh, standard deviation for the differences. And these would be all the values we would use, for example, to get the standard error of the mean difference. We could use these values so we can get the standard error using the variance and our sample size. Our sample size will, of course, come from the number of different scores we have. So I can use the count function here to count my different scores. And this will get me the standard error for the mean difference. And these would be the values, for example, I would use to compute my t-test. So the mean difference over the standard error would be t. And in this case, that difference is not going to be significant. And we could get a p-value, for example, a two-tailed p-value using the t-distribution command here and my t-value. And because we had 10 scores, we have 9 degrees of freedom. So there we've completed a t-test and got all the values on the way. Now, if we wanted to do this variance long way, we could do that. We would first need to calculate the sum of squares. So calculating the sum of squares starts by getting all of the deviations, which is how much each score differs from the mean difference score. So we'll just take a given value, the first difference, 27, and subtract the mean. Uh, that gets us our difference score. Here I can use the dollar sign to lock in place that command and autofill my series. So now I have the deviations for each one of these values. Now I have to get the squared deviations. So I'll take these values and I'll now square them to before I sum them to get the sum of squares. So let's square the difference. We just square a value using caret two and we're gonna autofill our series. And there we go. Once we've done that, we can get the sum of all of these to get the sum of squares. So the sum of squares here is the sum of the square deviations for the differences. And we get 2027.6. Now we could use the shortcut command in Excel to do this as we did with for a one sample case, which is div square, D-E-V-S-Q. We select our original values before doing any math with them. And there you go. That's the value we obtained. So to turn these into a variance, if we're doing it the long way, we would take the sum of squares and divide by the degrees of freedom, which here we had 10 different scores, so we have 9 degrees of freedom. So that is the variance that we calculated over here using the var command from Excel. And so this is how we could get the variance of the different scores it's just like doing it for a one sample case, so long as we remember that when we're doing related samples t-tests, everything always starts by getting the differences between the related pairs scores. And that's how you do it. I hope that helps a little bit, understanding the process for a related t, particularly with respect to the variance of the different scores.